themed attire? It, it, it's the press conference attire. You never know what we put on after this. After this or after? Oh, for the after party, for sure. Oh, oh, okay. So can you just talk to me about your performance? I know you said you do exactly what you did, so I imagine there's no surprises, but walk me through the few seconds you were in there. Uh, yes. I mean, I was pretty worried, actually. I started warming up before the match. I was like, well, dude, two five-minute rounds to warm up, and I was fatigued after the first five-minute warm-up. So I was a bit concerned going in, but obviously, luckily, it was a quick match. I've trained with him before, so I thought I had an advantage there. That's why I sort of pushed for this match. Like I said, um, thank God UFC Fight Pass paid him enough to take the match. You know what I mean? We've been trying to set the match up for quite a while. Is it true you had no cap whatsoever? You just rolled on in here? Yeah, I haven't been in Austin the entire year. I think I've done three days there. I've been, I've been avoiding my teammates at all costs. I've just been traveling, enjoying life. What's wrong with your teammates? Um, same thing that's wrong with every jiu-jitsu gym. You know, it's a socially awkward environment. Nah, these guys are cool. These guys compete in here are legends. So Mason came back here and said he heard that you may not compete again. Can you comment on that? Oh, for the right price, I'll do anything, you know? <laughs> Absolutely anything. Okay. <laughs> what would you, who would you like next then? If it, let's say you're coming back and they offer you a price you like, who excites you? M Mary Garley irritates me as a human being, so I think I'm going to keep that one and oh. And like, what I like is he takes everything so serious, a very passionate Brazilian man. If you've heard him on the mic, you've wanted to kill yourself. But me personally, I think that what I represent bothers him, so I want him to retire his career knowing that I have a victory over him. He Ed, said... Oh, yeah? Ahead. No, what were you going to say? He said that uh, you have a career in stand-up comedy after this. He, he said he talked highly of you. All right, I'll take back everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> so how soon would you like to... If, let's say that you get him. Would you do a camp then, or would you still kind of roll in? Or would it depend on when you get the fight? I mean, honestly, I'd have to put in a pretty good camp for him. I mean, these guys are quite big. You know what I mean? Like, Marigali weighed, I think, 232. Um, Lovato was 227. Me, when I'm not on a bender, I'm at best 212. You know? So it's like, well, we're giving up 20 pounds for these gentlemen. So it'd be a tough one to take on any of these big guys. Would you ask him to cut weight? I'd just ask for more money, I think. Okay. I think that'll sweeten the deal. Uh, last one for me. Uh, just a fun one. What's the biggest problem in jiu-jitsu right now? Uh, I mean, you guys know. When you do an interview, you have to listen to these people. That's the biggest problem, you know? Can you be more specific? <sighs> I, I always say it's steroids and autism. That's what our sport is, you know? That doesn't sell to the public too well. Thank you. Hey, Craig. Uh, I heard that there's this rumor out there that you were the one that stole Gordon Ryan's truck. Is this true? Absolutely. He left it in the driveway. He left the keys in the car, and he left all his weapons in there. He's going through menopause right now, so he's a bit emotional. That's what lured him down to the southern border. He's very passionate about defending the southern border like most elderly people in America. So what, what, what were your plans with the truck? Were you, like, did you just want to take it for a day and give it back, or were you trying to sell it, or what's up? Uh... I mean, he's a generous guy. He likes to share a lot of things. So he let me just have the truck for a day. But obviously, I was always going to give it back to him. Makes sense. Um, and uh, everyone I've talked to says that, and I, I'm, get, I'm sure you've asked about it so many times, but you versus Gordon is the biggest match that can be put on right now. Is that something that's going to happen at, at, before you stop grappling? I mean, who knows? We, I had a blood pressure reading last week that was through the roof. You know, you never know when this fucking show is going to end. But... Again, if the money's good, for sure I'll take that match, you know? Obviously, I'll need therapy for the trauma of having to listen to him talk in the pre-fire interviews, but if the money's good, I'll do it. Is uh, ADCC something you want to do this year? I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like, UFC Fight Pass pays very, very well, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. But ADCC is four matches for the chance of winning $10,000, you know? Like, I've gone through a list of things. I could sell my underwear and make more money than that. Fucking, I'm selling dick pills on Instagram. I make more money than that. Like, they make a lot of money from ticket sales because they post about how many tickets they sell. They're going to sell 18,000 tickets. They have streaming right deals with Flow Grappling. They were meant to be on Fire Pass. They're on Flow Grappling now. It's like, can I have a little bit of money? You know, like, fuck, I'll blow 10K at the after party if I win that thing. <laughs> Congrats.
Craig, you're already in the Vegas themed outfit. So what is your favorite part about Las Vegas? Probably leaving, to be honest. That's probably the biggest joy is when I realize how much money I've spent and how bad I feel when I get on that plane. I think, get me the fuck out of here. Do you, do you know when to stop? When to stop? Well, I have a flight at 8 a.m., so we've got about a fucking 5 a.m. window where we better sober up, pack our bags. Fair enough. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What's your game of choice? Uh, drinking. I don't know. Obviously, there's a few gentlemen's clubs around here that have robbed me many a time, you know? We've had a few fraud alerts on the card. Hey, Craig. Uh, I've covered quite a few boxing shows and some MMA, but this was my first jiu-jitsu event, so I'm a bit unfamiliar with some of the terms. Can you explain what a nose beer is? Nose beer. <laughs> Mate, with that accent, you well and truly know what a nose beer is. And nobody wears that hat unless they've done a few. <laughs> Is, is a nose beer uh, a good base for jiu-jitsu more so than steroids and autism? I mean, I said this last week. I said I think being gay is the best base for jiu-jitsu, you know? But nose beers do quite well, give you a bit of confidence before the match. Thanks. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>